Hi there, I'm Michael Posnick with Century 21 Northumberland Real Estate in Prince Edward Island. I've been actively involved with real estate on the island here since 1997. Today that's over 12 years ago. My specialty being waterfront properties and raw land. And today we're going to be discussing how to buy your very own piece of PEI swamp land. Actually no, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss with you how to avoid from avoid buying a piece of PEI swamp land. We're going to do it in less than 10 minutes. Uh, the reason this video was created is because I've been very, very concerned and very worried about certain purchasers going out, uh, looking at properties on the island, and at the end of the day making an offer and ending up with a beautiful piece of swamp land they can't do anything with other than put a picnic table on it or maybe do some canoeing. It's very, very important to do your due diligence when buying land. That's the key phrase, due diligence. Uh, the problem being here, when you're looking at a piece of land, may it be a lot that's out in the boondocks next to nothing, or it's in a subdivision, or you're buying a large piece of acreage, may it be waterfront or non-waterfront, nothing uh, guarantees that you can use that piece of property for your intended use. May it be building a cottage, uh, putting an RV on it, uh, putting up a, an office building or a hotel or whatever it is you want to do. Just don't simply assume that piece of land uh, you're going to get building permits for anything because you're not. And a lot of times uh, you could be buying a piece of land that's virtually useless. Uh, not so much just for for building permits or for soil types, but, uh, you know, there are pieces of property out there I've seen sold that uh, you just couldn't get electricity to them. It was impossible because the neighbors wouldn't grant uh, easements or right-of-ways. Um, anyway, here's the basics. Most real estate agents will tell you this. They should. Um, and in my opinion, it should actually be against the law to sell a property that hasn't had the due diligence performed on it before even entering the market. But that's not done. People don't want to spend the money. Um, let's look at a, a one-acre lot uh, on the water in Prince Edward Island. And let's say it sits by itself. It's not in a subdivision. And what, would, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that piece of property is of use to us, uh, either now or down the road? Uh, here's the things we need to look for. Right away, uh, right away, not right of way, uh, right away when you look at this property, you want to make sure that there is electricity or you can get electricity to the property at a reasonable cost. If you're unsure about that, call uh, Maritime Electric if it's outside Summerside or Charlottetown. Uh, give them the property ID number of the property. They should be able to help you. So make sure you can get services, unless, of course, you're just going to use it as a campsite or run your own generator 24 hours a day. Um, other things that, that should be done is um, if you're going to be building, I would get a PERC test done. Uh, PERC stands for percolation. It basically means that somebody goes out there with a backhoe, they dig a hole in the ground or multiple holes in the ground, they try to determine the soil types and the level of percolation of the soil. In other words, if you're putting a septic system in, they will determine what the top layer of soil is, and they'll also uh, look at how fast the water is going through the hole. They'll take a little test tube that's got uh, indicators on it, and they'll put this test tube that has um, it's almost like a big needle into the soil, and they'll time how long it takes that water to disappear. They'll look at how long it takes water to collapse the walls of the hole. They'll notice how high the water is after a certain amount of time. So perk test is really, really important. Uh, it is vital and absolutely required if you're getting a, a, a building permit. Unless, you know, it's in an approved subdivision, which we'll get to later. So get your perk test done. The government used to do them. They don't do them anymore. Uh, private perk test consultants can do it. You can hire a backhoe from any construction company. Get that done. It's not expensive. That will give you an idea whether you're buying swamp land and the water table six inches below the surface or you're buying a quality piece of land you can build on. I've sold 
properties before that looked absolutely beautiful. And when we went to do our perk tests, you know, it was basically a spring popping out of the ground. So they couldn't be built on. Other things. If you're spending twenty, thirty, eighty, a hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars on a lot, have the sense to have it surveyed. Because you don't know what you're getting, number one. If it's on the water, chances are it's eroded. There's been 275 acre parcels that have sold that turned out to be 230 acre parcels. There's been lots that are halfway into the water. There's been lots that are out in the water. Get your survey done. Make these a condition of the purchase and sale. Um, I suggest to all my clients, apply for a building permit. It's good for two years. Uh, it's not complicated to make an application for a building permit in PEI, but it will guarantee you can do something with that land. Um, make all these things part of your due diligence. The survey, the perk test, uh, make sure there's electricity leading to the property. Get everything in writing. If Maritime Electric says they can put electricity down there, make sure they've got the easements the right of ways to get the poles down there if they're not going down a road. You cannot run telephone wires over somebody else's property property without a written easement typically. Uh, I'm not a lawyer but I've done it before. We always had to have everything documented. The neighbors always had to cooperate. In some circumstances there's been lots sold where you have a disgruntled neighbor, family member that doesn't want that lot being developed. They won't give you a right of way. So uh, that's it as far as buying a lot. If you're buying a lot in a in a so-called you know approved subdivision uh, some of these subdivisions could be, you know, depending on the age. If it's a year or two old, chances are you're pretty safe. Again, if you apply for a building permit, you eliminate any possibility of anything going wrong, as, as far as I'm concerned, in 99% of the cases. Uh, if the subdivision's 10, 20, 30, 40 years old, it would be in your best interests to, again, apply for a building permit or at the very least, talk to a property development officer at Access PEI. Uh, it never hurts to talk to Access PEI. Talk to a good property development officer. Um, there's ones that are uh, cooperative. For the most part, they're all excellent and great people to deal with. Um, typically, with every property out there, uh, if there's anything been, has been done to it, they will have it on file. I've seen pieces of property where they brought out records that were over 40 years old. So they have everything on file for that property. They will look after you and help you with your due diligence. Do not buy a property as is, where is, because you could be buying something perfectly useless other than to photograph or maybe put a picnic table on. Um, your agent should be able to help you with this as well. Um, some of the later subdivisions, uh, for instance, my favorite, sunburycove.com, uh, Sunbury Cove Estates, which is at sunburycove.com. There's no need to get perk tests done or anything else. The lots are all, you know, within a couple, two, three years old. They've all been surveyed. They've all been perked and everything else. Um, bigger acreage. I'm up to 8 minutes and 33 seconds here, so I have to cut this fairly short. Uh, bigger acreage, if you're buying 20, 30, 40, 50 acres, my advice to you is, again, get it surveyed. It's going to cost you, but it's worth it. Um, getting something surveyed not only tells you where the property lines are, but it, it proves to you that the deed is valid. In some cases, I've sold property, for instance, 50 acres on the water, no one could agree where the property lines were because they were referring to things that didn't exist, like rivers that had dried up, wells that didn't exist, posts that were gone. So they had to go around to all the adjoining uh, uh, properties and get uh, boundary agreements written up. So if you're looking at a big piece of property, uh, very least, uh, get a soils map from the government. And depending on what you're looking at doing at the property, uh, you may want to go a bit of a step further, which I will get into in another video because we're running out of time. Uh, so if there's any questions, call me, 1-888-295-6863, or visit my website, michaelshomes.com. Make sure you add yourself to the mailing list. There's 30,000 people on it right now looking to buy property. Have a great day. Bye for now.